everybody and welcome to another top five board gaming video. In this one we're going to be talking about ridiculous games. Before I get started though I would like to invite you if you haven't done so already to take a look at all of my various social media pages as well as my Patreon. On my social media I'll be posting fun articles, contests, giveaways, all sorts of cool stuff. And on my Patreon if you sponsor me you can look at videos ahead of time, you can vote on new videos, all sorts of other really cool stuff there too. But getting back to the topic at hand, ridiculous games. What do I mean by that? Well there's a couple of different things I looked at for this. I looked at games that make me feel ridiculous when I play them, that seem ridiculous when they come to the table, that are just ridiculously huge, have gotten ridiculously out of hand all sorts of other things like that. So that's sort of where I was coming with it. But you guys know that I love to hear from you. What are some games that you find to be absolutely ridiculous? And more importantly, why? You guys know I love hearing from you and I'm always curious what you all have to say. But that said, we're gonna get started with my number five. Number five is Magic the Gathering. You may ask, Danny, why is this on the list? It's about board games. Well, that's why it's number five. It's because it's still a game, it's still ridiculous, and it still goes on this list. Magic the Gathering has been around for decades and they're constantly adding new cards. It constantly makes my brain hurt. It's absolutely ridiculous. I did an entire video about how ridiculous collectible card games are. But this game is lucky that it only got to number five because I sort of kind of followed my own personal rules. But the fact is that there's a lot going on with it. There's a ton of different fields for the tournaments and how you're going to do it. And if you want to stay in the up-to-date tournaments, you got to stay up-to-date with the cards. And it's just absolutely insane. There is so much going on with it. It's just ludicrous. Magic the Gathering, my number five. And number four is Munchkin. Now, Munchkin is actually one of my favorite games. I really do enjoy playing this. However, it is ridiculous. I actually talked about this in a similar video where I talked about overdone games, where we've got Munchkin Zombies, we've got Munchkin Foo, we've got Munchkin Star, or Star Munchkin, we've got Munchkin Impossible, we've got The Good, The Bad, and The Munchkin. Did I say Munchkin Zombies? I felt like I said Munchkin Zombies. It's absolutely insane. Munchkin Legendary, Munchkin Pathfinder, Munchkin Cthulhu, just so many Munchkin. It's absolutely ridiculous. In this box itself, I actually have all of my various Munchkin, um, Munchkin instruction booklets. And here, this is just some of them, right? There's so much Munchkin going on, it's just like, calm down guys, okay? Like, just take a breather and just chill. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. But again, it is one of my favorite games, that's why it's number four on the list, and it's not like higher or lower or whatever it is, it's lower down because while it is ridiculous, it's still a lot of fun for me personally. Munchkin, my number four. And number three is the Campaign for North Africa. This is a game that a lot of you probably haven't heard of and I hadn't heard of until just a few weeks ago, but it is absolutely insane. It's a war game that was released in, I believe, the 70s, if I'm not mistaken, and it takes approximately 60 days to play it. 60 days. Like, just straight up 24-hour days of playing this game. 60. Right? Something along those lines. It's like 1,500 hours, I think. Some, some, something like that. If you play the full-fledged game. One of the ideas behind it when it was designed was that they wanted to get all of the absolute little minuscule things done. So, for example, your fuel evaporates. Right? It actually happens, but you have to keep track of it. You need to have extra rations to boil your pasta. There's, I think it's actually called the macaroni rule. It was like, oh, it's a joke, but no, if you're Italian, you need extra water so that you can boil your pasta. You know, stuff like that. It's extremely micromanaging, but it's kind of interesting because it's a team-based thing. So it seems interesting. I wouldn't mind giving it a try, but I deign to think how bad it could get. Um, it just seems absolutely insane. It's probably the longest one that I've ever heard of, and that's why it's on this list. But again, I've never played it. I've never even seen it. Uh, Campaign for North Africa, my number three. And number two, I've got Kingdom Death Monster. The big reason why this one's on the list is because of that Kickstarter campaign, campaign or rather those Kickstarter campaigns. Absolutely insane. Huge amounts of money to that the game not only earned, but just to simply buy the game required an insane amount. This is what really launched a lot of this miniature heavy 
craziness that we see on Kickstarter all the time now. And it's completely ridiculous. When I was at Gen Con, I actually got to look up close at some of the miniatures. And don't get me wrong, they are absolutely gorgeous and I love them. And I really wouldn't mind playing the game, but it's so expensive, it's so big, it's so bulky, it's so ridiculous. I just don't understand how people can get by with it. Kingdom Death Monster, mine, number two. Number one is Quelf. Quelf is terrible. Quelf is a party game where you do insane, stupid things for no reason other than the fact that a card told you to do it. You're going to be doing things where, like, you have to balance on one leg and do the chicken dance. You have to do something like this, and you say something. Or It's absolutely ridiculous. It makes no sense. It is a dumb, dumb party game. The thing is that, compared to the other games, it's reasonably sized. It's a single game. There's no expansions to it or anything like that. It's a party game. You would think it would be a little bit ridiculous, a little bit fun. It is a lot of ridiculous, but it is no fun. It is a terrible game. It makes no sense, and it's just frustrating to play. Quelf, my number one. Well, folks, that's going to be it for my personal top five ridiculous games. As you can see with, with my list, I had a little bit of a mixture of crazy big, crazy insane, crazy long, just all sorts of different stuff. So I would love to hear what you guys have to say. What are your criteria for deeming a game as ridiculous? What makes it ridiculous? Why do you find it ridiculous? Do you like any of the games that I mentioned? I would love to hear that as well. You guys know that I love to hear all sorts of stuff from you. Put it all in the comments below. But with that, thank you very, very much for watching regardless, and I will see you next time.